You see, Hazrat Umar Anhu had great love for the Prophet ﷺ and likewise the Prophet ﷺ had great love for him also. So much so that on the death of the Prophet ﷺ, he could not digest and believe that the Prophet ﷺ had passed away. As a matter of fact, he said that any person who dares to utter that the Prophet ﷺ has died, I will chop his neck off. The Prophet ﷺ is not dead. He is alive and he is gone for 40 days like Musa left his people for 40 days. Until Hazrat Abu Bakr came and assured him that the Prophet ﷺ had actually died. At one point, he was sitting with the Prophet ﷺ and he told the Messenger of Allah ﷺ that Ya Rasulullah, I love you more than any person on the face of this earth, but not more than myself. And the Prophet ﷺ said that Ya Umar, your Iman cannot be complete until you love me more than even yourself. He thought for a moment and he said, Ya Rasulullah, I love you even more than myself. You see, love for the Sahaba was not love as we define it. When you say you love someone, it means that you are willing to die for that person. It means that you are willing to put that person's wishes and desires before your own. His opinion matters more and whenever presented with that opportunity, you would give preference to his opinion than to your own. And that is why Hazrat Umar Anho thought and said that I love you more than even myself. And this is another great lesson for us to remember that likewise when we proclaim that we love the Prophet and we say we are Ashaqe Rasul and so on and so forth, are we willing to put the opinion of Prophet Muhammad before our own? Are we willing to live and die for the Prophet Just something for us to ponder and reflect upon. So likewise, the way that Hazrat Umar Anhu loved the Prophet the Prophet loved him also. And the proof of this is that the Holy Prophet used to get many dreams about Sayyidina Umar. And he used to share these dreams normally during the Fajr, after the Fajr prayer with the companions. One such dream was that the Prophet saw in his dream that he was drinking from a bowl of bowl some milk. So much he drank that the milk started to he started to feel the tasir or the uh, or the coolness of that milk in his fingertips. And then when he was completely satisfied and drenched in that milk, he saw that there was some left in that container and he passed it on to Umar Anhu, who drank from the same container. And when the Sahaba asked that, Ya Rasulullah, what does this mean? What is the tabir of this dream? He وسلم, replied that this milk represents knowledge. This represents knowledge which I have received and now the leftover I have passed it on to Umar In another dream, he saw the Prophet ﷺ that he was pulling out water from a well. And then Abu Bakr also pulled out water from the well but it wasn't too much. And then when Umar came and started pulling water from the well, he said that I have never seen a man pull out water faster and in such large quantities as Umar and the tabir of this dream came when Hazrat Umar expanded the Muslim empire like it had never expanded before. Within a short span of 10 years, he took it to heights where Islam had never been before. This was the achievement of Sayyidina Umar as well. In another dream, the Holy Prophet saw that people came to him wearing garments of different length. Some were short, some were a little bit long. And then when Sayyidina Umar came, his garment was dragging way down on the floor. And when the Sahaba Karam asked the tabir of this dream, the Holy Prophet said that the deen of Umar is like that garment. Some people have a little bit of deen, some have a little bit more. But the deen of Umar is like that which is flowing, overflowing his own self. See, these were good news that was given to these companions during their own lifetime. So imagine their state at that time. And if it was us in their place, we would have rejoiced and said, end of Islam, let's celebrate. But no, these companions stood firm to the deen even then. Even after they had been told that they were going to get Jannah for sure. In another dream, the Holy Prophet actually saw the palace of Sayyidina Umar in Jannah. The beautiful white palace that the Holy Prophet said, I wanted to go in that palace, but I remembered the gharat of you, Umar. And I thought, I better not go and invade his privacy. And Sayyidina Umar began to cry that not from you, you, you Ya Rasulullah, not from you. 
This was the relationship between Sayyidina Umar and the Holy Prophet Another good news that was given to him in his lifetime was that the Holy Prophet told him that Wallahi Umar, in whichever way you go, the shaitan runs away from you. Whichever path you take, shaitan runs away from that path. Shaitan has given up on you. Shaitan is scared of you because you are so firm on the deen, you are so firm on the sharia, Shaitan knows that this guy will not bend or budge. So he has lost all hope in you. Whichever path you take, Shaitan runs from that path. That not Umar, not Umar. The Holy Prophet said that for every nation, there has been a muhaddis. Person who has been, who is not a prophet, but who has been inspired by the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said that if there was a muhaddis in my ummah, it would be Umar radiallahu anhu. In another narration, he mentioned that I am the Khatimul Anbiya. I am the seal of the prophets. I am the last and final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if a messenger of Allah was to come after me, it would be Sayyidina Umar. So this is just to give you an idea of the enormity of the character of this man. Where he used to be and what Islam made him. Hearts can change. Any heart can change. So this is another lesson for us to remember that even if we think that a person is far away from Islam and me talking to that person about Islam will not convince him, think again. Because people have embraced Islam who have been last on our list. That forget about contacting him, he is not going to embrace Islam. And then these people become the best of the mu'mineen. Those who are guaranteed paradise by the Holy Prophet There is more strangeness to the character of Sayyidina Umar. He is a very mysterious man. Approximately 15 to 20 revelations of the Holy Quran were said by Sayyidina Umar before they were even revealed. Or they were revealed because of a question asked by Sayyidina Umar. One such revelation that came in the Holy Quran was about the Maqam Ibrahim, which Sayyidina Umar recommended to the Prophet that we should pray at the Maqam Ibrahim in Makkah. And lo and behold, a revelation comes in the Holy Quran in Surah Al Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 125, where Allah says, And take you the Maqam of Ibrahim as a place of prayer. This came immediately after Sayyidina Umar had mentioned it to the Holy Prophet Similarly, the ayat of hijab had come earlier, but then it was Sayyidina Umar who went to the Holy Prophet telling him that your wives when they go out, they need to cover themselves properly so that they can be recognized that they are the mu'minas. And lo and behold, Aisha Raja Ta'ala Anha narrates that the Holy Prophet was eating something at that time and his bite was going in his mouth when he was hit by a revelation and we all saw before our eyes the revelations coming to the Holy Prophet and he revealed the verses from Surah Al-Azab chapter 33 verse 59 where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the messenger of Allah that O oh Prophet tell your wives and your daughters and the women of the believers to draw their cloaks all over their bodies that will be better that they should be known so as to not be annoyed. And Allah is ever oft forgiving, most merciful. In another place, we know that after the battle of Badr, the Muslims took some prisoners of war. And the Holy Prophet ﷺ was asking opinions of the companions that what should we do with these prisoners of war because this is the first time we have ever gone to battle and now we've got some prisoners of war. So instructions had not come yet as to what to do with them. So Sayyidina Umar recommended that these people have terrorized us and tortured us and now we cannot just let them go. They must be punished and we must teach before the ones who come after them a, a big lesson now. This is the first battle and we need to teach lessons and the disbelievers and the kuffar a lesson what you get after you attack and oppress and try to uh, be aggressive towards the Muslimin. Sayyidina Abu Bakr said, let's give them back and ask their people for ransom. These people, we agree that they are transgressors, they have crossed all bounds 
but let's return them and get ransom money back and we can use that ransom money for the good of the Muslims and to expand the Muslim army. After thinking on the subject, the Prophet ﷺ said, okay, I agree with the opinion of Abu Bakr Anhu. Revelations came, which have been mentioned in Surah Al-Anfal, chapter 8, verse 67. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, It is not for a prophet that he should have prisoners of war and free them with ransom. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala agreed with the opinion of Sayyidina Umar and revealed it in the form of a revelation. This is the mystery around Sayyidina Umar Razidala Haram. 